Hey, Phil here from Radio.co, and thanks for checking out this particular instalment of the Internet Radio Back to Basics series, where I'm going into easily consumable yet nicely filling detail about all you want to know before launching your very own internet radio station. Now, this is the second episode of the series in where I'll be discussing basic equipment you'll want to set your eyes upon, you know, before going on air, as well as exploring other pieces of kit you may be familiar with, you may have never heard of, or kits you may just want to add to your wish list, you know, for Christmas. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. In the previous episode, I showcased our fantastic Radio.co platform, the only software solution you could possibly need to get your station up and running in no time at all. And if you haven't done so already, I strongly recommend checking it out to get the perfect introduction to the software that we and over 6,000 of our global broadcasters are actually quite fond of. Now, if equipment is something you feel comfortable with, then why not stick around anyway? You know, just in case you find something interesting. And without further ado, let's get some kit out on the table and, you know, let's really kick things off. So, what I'm going to put place here is, what exactly do you need? Well, first things first, you need a computer. Of course, it sounds obvious, but people say, you know, can I broadcast through a mobile phone or a tablet? And Yes, you can with a few caveats, but we always prefer and recommend using a computer or a laptop. Doesn't matter whether you are Windows or Mac, it's whatever you find most comfortable. Broadcasting, and particularly with Radio.co, works with both. I personally use a Windows computer. Now, a question I do get asked a lot is, I have a Chromebook, can I use that? Yes and no. For internet broadcasting, you can use a Chromebook to use our Radio.co software. So, you know, managing content, building shows, just generally running in automation. If you wanted to broadcast live, however, the additional software you need for broadcasting live, such as an encoder, uh, that, uh, you know, a, a word you may have heard thrown around. Um, as far as we're aware, they are only compatible with Windows and Mac, or there are some also that are compatible with iOS, but nothing at the moment for Chrome OS. So. If you're wanting to do live broadcasting, it's always recommended to use a Windows or a Mac computer. And what computer you need is entirely up to you. Radio.co, again, is a cloud-based platform. So what that means for you is it doesn't actually run off your computer power. It runs off your internet primarily and our servers. So because of that, you only really need an average everyday powered computer, truth be told. So, uh, you know, I've got a fancy one, but that's just because I use it every day for work. If you've got one that's gathering dust, um, you know, as long as it's got at least maybe Windows 7, 8, I don't know which ones they come, as long as it boots up at a good enough speed and you've got uh, plenty of USB ports for equipment, that should be all that you need. As, yeah, as long as it's not taking a day to load, yeah, you'll be absolutely fine. So just an average everyday powered Windows or Mac computer. So that's the first thing. Um, you, of course, need internet. Um, if you are broadcasting live, we always recommend having at least an upload speed of two megabytes per second, which is actually reasonably quite a low bar to set. Obviously, the greater the speed, the more reliable it is, then you know, obviously the better success of broadcasting you'll have. But if your station is in automation, whether that's primarily or exclusively, you don't actually need internet at all unless you are uploading content and programming your shows. Radio.co actually powers the station for you, so even if you lost internet power, your station will still continue broadcasting. So, computer, check. Internet connection, check. Now, as for kit, I've got a lot here and I'm going to go through all of it, so, but the only one you really need, I'd say that is essential, and that's only if you plan to speak on, uh, on air, is a microphone, such as, first of all, this a USB powered microphone. And this one specifically is the Rode NT USB Mini. Now I personally had the original, the, the, the bigger brother of this microphone, just a regular NT USB. So I can personally vouch for this particular model, um, or at least this variation of it. And this is a USB powered microphone, which as I suggest, you simply plug it into your computer, 
and away you go. You usually don't need any additional drivers or anything to really power it. Just plug it in and go. Uh, Rode in particular, we have reviewed an awful lot of kit from them, so they do come highly recommended. Um, this will probably set you back, it's around $100 to $120 pounds. Um, and that's kind of the benchmark I always recommend um, going for when it comes to buying a microphone. Spending at least you know, upwards of $80, 80 pounds for a good quality microphone. Doesn't matter how uh, funny you are, doesn't matter how professional you are, doesn't matter how really hot your uh, content is. If you sound terrible, no one's gonna keep listening. So spend a good amount of money and 80 to 100 pounds is a good benchmark to set yourself. So like I said, this is a USB powered microphone. There are tons of others available like Rode, Shaw, Blue, like the Blue Yeti in particular, you may have heard of. A lot of people use that for streaming and podcasting. Behringer, another very, very popular piece of uh, 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 equipment uh, manufacturers. Uh, there are tons and tons of available and we review an awful lot. So if you wanna see our recommendations, you'll find them on our website. But uh, yeah, a USB powered microphone, you don't need anything else, talk into it, Broadcast live, perfect, you are done. Now the other type of microphone you may have heard is an XLR microphone. And that's what one of these are. This is a Shure SM7B and it's actually my microphone of choice. Um, this set me back about 300 pounds, I think when I bought it originally. So it is quite a high end microphone. There's no need to go mad and buy something this expensive right from the off. But what an XLR microphone is, is unlike a USB connection which plugs into your computer. These microphones use an XLR cable and therefore an XLR device to connect it to. Uh, and this is one of these, an XLR cable, very simple. A very, a very, albeit very, very small one. It's a bit like a garrot wire, this one. Um, but uh, yeah, this is specifically a very, very tiny XLR cable. Um, now, to power an XLR microphone, you are going to need to connect it to a XLR compatible device like a mixer or an audio interface as we've got here. Um, between using a USB and an XLR, it all comes down to a personal preference. You can get some really, really high quality, fantastic USB microphones like the Rode NT USB Mini there. But some people prefer to use the XLR microphone because arguably there's a lot more going on in it. It's a bit more of a powerful microphone, capable of doing so much more. And the fact that you can plug that into a device that allows you to manually change your uh, you know, your levels, your gain, your faders and everything. So just to have a bit more creative control and freedom over the sound of your vocals may be the reason why you go for an XLR microphone instead. So as I say, this is the Shure SM7B, probably a bit more of an industry standard microphone. You might find that littered throughout studios all over the world. But another one that's kind of creeping slightly behind it, again, Rode, is the Rode PodMic, which is one that we've used a lot uh, in some of our videos. It comes, again, very critically acclaimed. And this is a very nicely priced uh, entry-level uh, XLR microphone, retailing for around $100. I think when it was released, it was about $90, something like that. Uh, again, this works off an XLR cable, and it's a very, very good microphone. There is, of course, a difference in sound quality and clarity comparing it to something that is three times the price. But if you want a really crystal clear, clean sound for uh, beginning your broadcasting, then you can't go wrong with a Rode pod mic. Hey you, yes you. Did you know you can start your very own radio station right now for free? Yes, for free. Simply click the link in the corner to start your seven day free trial today. Uh, of course, there are all the variations. This is a Movo microphone, a bit more on the cheaper end of professional XLR microphone. Um, again, Shaw, Behringer, Aston, Universal Audio. There's a, a, an onslaught of incredible microphones out there. Just find one that you think fits you and check out our reviews if you want to know how they sound. Now, as I say, to connect these and to actually use an XLR microphone, you will need something along the lines of this, a mixer or an audio interface. Now again, another question I get asked is, what's the difference? Do I need both? Which one do I go for? Again, it's a personal preference. As you can see, these are audio interfaces, the Focusrite Vocaster 2, and it's uh, the thing that it wiped out very, uh, you know, not too long ago when this was released. It's um, the, the one that came before it, the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. I was gonna say predecessor, but that's the wrong one. I can't remember the other one. Rowan, what's the other word for the opposite of predecessor? 
ancestor, and this is the successor to it. There we go, I got there eventually. <laughs> so, uh, so what an audio interface is, is it's basically a slimmed down portable mixer. It has a lot less functionality than a mixer, but that's often better for you depending on what your setup is. So these are mixers. We've got a, a Behringer Zenix USB mixer, and we've also got the brand new awesome, again, Rode. Again, we say we, we do a lot of uh, reviews for them. Uh, this is the Rode uh, Pro, uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, brand new. Now, as you can see, these mixers here, they have a range of different faders and functionalities and buttons, whilst these don't. A mixer arguably gives you a lot more, I guess, freedom to refine the sound of your vocals and any audio source going through it. So as you can see with this Behringer Zenix, we've got a lot of individual knobs. Some of them will have individual faders like this. Just allows you to change the EQ, um, a lot of the gain, individual sounds to really get a sound that you're happy with. And you know, if you've got plenty of inputs to plug in, uh, speakers, additional microphones, uh, different audio sources like mobile phones, for example. That's what a mix is good for. Lots of different inputs to allow you to manually adjust all of them. This in particular one is uh, on the cheaper end. Always make sure it's a USB powered mixer or interface. You'll find it a heck of a lot easier to use. Um, so they all come in different shapes and sizes, different uh, amounts of ports, um, you know, connections and all things like that. So that will do you really well for quite a portable, albeit very heavy mixer. Or you can get something like a Rodecaster Pro or the Rodecaster Pro 2 here, which also works as a digital console, just to add even more confusion into the mix. That basically just means um, it's more than just a mixer. You can actually record content directly into it. So you can see the levels are going. It's got a little computer screen on it, and I can record stuff onto a micro SD. Uh, now, because of that, it's got a huge amount of functionality. These are on the topper end of a, uh, a good USB mixer, you know, about six, seven hundred dollars or so, something like this. And mixers come in lots of shapes and sizes and prices. Some custom ones, we've got like an Axia IQ console uh, in the office, and that was a, a custom made, I think about three thousand dollars, something like that. So they do come, uh, maybe even more, um, but they do come in a, a wide variety of usage. So if you are looking to have individual inputs or the ability to actually change individual inputs like here, then a mixer is definitely the way to go. You can get a more refined sound that you're happy with. If you literally just want to plug in and go, an audio interface is the way to go. They are cheaper, smaller, lighter, portable. Uh, that's a Daft Punk song, isn't it? Um, but here we also have this, which is brand new, the uh, Focusrite Vocaster 2. Now this is kind of part of the new evolution of what audio interfaces are like. Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 has been a staple part of studios and broadcasters for the last 10 years, and this is now wiped out completely. Um, now the Focusrite 2i2, really high quality clarity of sound, but it pretty much just is a way of working your XLR microphone. This opens up the possibilities to do a lot more. It has the ability to plug in one or two inputs like here. Also allows you to plug in your speakers, again for monitoring but it also allows you to connect cables in for cameras. So if you want to incorporate video in your broadcasting, this will mean it's recording the audio directly into your camera. So there's no need for syncing, it'll do it automatically. Um, there's also Bluetooth functionality. So if you have audio, uh, like trailers or audio files, ads, or just a caller you'd like to broadcast on air, connect it via Bluetooth and broadcast them on air. So this is kind of like the new the new generation of audio interfaces, things that are capable of doing so much more, similar to mixers, just in a more condensed, portable, really light way. So as I say, what interface or mixer you go for, which of the two, it's all down to you. If you want something that will do pretty much everything, you've got these brand new consoles. If you want something that allows you to do multiple inputs for a studio where you're gonna have lots of microphones, a mixer. If you just want you or maybe a duo to broadcast, uh, an audio interface is definitely the way to go. And again, popular brands, Focusrite, Rode, Behringer, they're just a small, small percentage of what's available. Now for some other doodads and things that you may want to consider, things like a good pair of headphones. These are the Rode NTH100s. I reviewed them not too long ago. Really great studio quality sound. When it comes to headphones, ideally you want them to both be comfortable and to give you a really accurate 
isolated sound. You want to be able to make sure you can hear yourself properly because that's likely how your audience are hearing you as well. So a nice closed back pair of headphones, like the, um, I said, the Rode NTH100s, uh, the Bayer Dynamic DT770s are a popular pair that I have personally, which are really, really good closed back headphones. And again, so many brands do their own versions of it, but you know, even just a good 30 pound pair of Sony headphones, or you know, anything that you find comfortable and it's really closing around your ear and it's giving you a really good isolated sound. That's what you want. No need to necessarily break the bank with them. We've got this doodad here. Don't know why I'm going for my word of the day's doodad. Have it spread across there. Uh, so this doodad is a, um, a boom arm, or we've got a slight other variation of just simply a little mic stand here. Boom arms, mic stands, great for just, if you're like me and you talk a lot with your hands, this just allows you just to be more hands-free. Um, also means that if you're knocking the table, there's less chance of the uh, reverberations coming through to the microphone. Because again, I'm talking with my hands, sometimes they go plonk on the table. So this just means that even if it is wobbling, not too much sound is uh, coming into that. So boom arm, microphone stand, I'd say that's more essential than something to consider. Um, obviously cables, if it's an XLR microphone, you're gonna need an XLR cable. These are incredibly cheap. Uh, again, only needed if you want an XLR microphone. Otherwise, USB cables for those microphones are always provided. If they're not, it's probably dodgy uh, or cheap. Uh, and uh, other things as well like this uh, is a pop shield. Simply meant to capture pops and plosives. So things from hard peas, a lot of, um, you know, especially when I talk about podcasting, obviously you can imagine how aggravating that is to hit with hard peas all the time. So pop shields are really good for that. Uh, again, these are really, really cheap. Um, you know, a lot of microphones will come with these as well. Um, I guess these are kind of like, pop shields or muffs in the industry, at least once upon a time. Uh, these are really good, again, for capturing a lot of those pops and plosives to stop them breaking through into the microphone, but there's no harm in doubling up. You know, it's, it's not gonna condense and cushion the sound too much. So things like that are always good. And that's really it for equipment. There is some advanced equipment that, you know, for a lot of microphones like the Shure SM7B, for example, is very sensitive. And um, what I mean by that is, um, it requires an awful lot of gain, so you're gonna have to turn the gain way up to get a really good clear sound on that. Because of that, it means that there is no wiggle room to increase the sound of it. So you may want to use things called um, uh, so, uh, mic processors or preamps just to bring the power down a little bit. Um, but that's going into advanced kit um, uh, uh, situations. But really for basic broadcasting, computer, internet, USB microphone or XLR with an accompanying desk if you want it and you are good to go. And there we have it, equipment of all shapes, sizes, budgets and needs and nowhere near as complicated to use as you may have previously thought. Whether you need just a laptop and an internet connection or a fully fledged recording studio, I hope you found this episode helpful. And please do get in touch if you have any questions about what you saw or perhaps didn't see here today. In the next episode of our Back to Basics course, I could very well be discussing how to use some of that kit I talked about earlier as part of our live broadcast. So if you've ever felt like now's the time to get on air live, right here, right now, then head on over to the next video. Or, of course, if you feel like you have all your ducks in a row already, then why not head to our pricing page? Select the plan you like and activate your free seven-day trial today. And until next time, take care and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, have you ever thought about launching your very own internet radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think, especially when you make the time to chat to myself or a member of the radio.co team. To do just that, head to our website, radio.co forward slash demo, where I can talk about your plans, any questions you may have, and you know, me and the team can really get you up to speed in launching your own internet radio station in literally minutes. It couldn't be easier. Why not check out some of our webinars, tutorials, help guides situated uh, around me or why not visit our website radio.co or even drop me an email studio at radio.co until next time take care and happy broadcasting